All right. Hello, everybody. Good to have you. Welcome to another video. Um, we're going to get started. All right. Why was the chef arrested? He was caught beating an egg. Har, har, har. Okay. So today we are looking at a new topic. How about that? All right. So we are going to be looking at um, differential and integral calculus, especially relating to logs and exponentials. So uh, let's just quickly take a look here and I'm going to smash these ones out here. We're not going to spend too much time because this is kind of a review. If you have y equals e to the x, kind of has this exponential kind of graph, cuts at one. Um, that's it. If I have y equals e to the negative x, it just means it kind of flips around and it goes the other way. So it'll go like this. Again, having an asymptote at um, the x-axis. And again, it's going to cut at one. Yeah. If I have e to the x plus c, it's going to shift it either up or down. So in this case here, um, whatever, wherever it kind of goes is just if this is c plus one, uh, then that would be your graph this time. Okay, so hopefully you remember that it's still going to have an asymptote here, but because I've shifted the whole thing up by one, now my asymptote is at uh, x equals one. And c is just however up you go or however down you go. Um, if I have e to the ax, it's just honestly going to make it either just steeper or less steep. Um, generally, it kind of makes it a little bit steeper. Um, again, it's still going to cut at one. Okay. Now, if you have e to the x minus b, now what happens here is it's going to actually, wherever b is, let's say b is here this time. Oh, let's do, yeah, let's do b here. Now, if it's kind of like there, it moves your exponential left or right. So in this case here, if it's minus b, it moves it to the right. And so normally we would cut through, normally we would go through here, right? But now we're actually going to cut through that point B there. So it's going to go here. And now it's going to cut through one at that point. OK, so it's going to cut one at that point B. OK, so putting all these things that we've learned together, um, just as an example, if I go e to the x minus 2 plus 1, so immediately I know I'm going to have some sort of plus 1. So I'm going to have my asymptote there at positive one and I'm going to have e to the x minus two so it's going to shift it two to the right so that means I'm expecting it to cut through there and so it's just going to look a little bit like this so that's one that'll be two that'll be two and then your exponential will look a little bit like this so that there is a really quick overview of all your exponentials and your graphs. Hopefully that's enough to kind of get you through. Now, first things first, we're going to learn how to um, derive uh, finding tangents and normals. And I just realized here, or if we're finding equation of a straight line, which is a tangent and a normal, it's going to be this y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. You should be somewhat really familiar with this. Um, it's your point gradient formula. Now, they'll ask you to find the equation of the tangent and the normal of y equals e, 3e, 2x at x equals to 2. And just a quick little recap. This should be from last year. But if y equals e to the x, your y dash becomes e to the x. Nothing changes there. If your y is e to some sort of function of x, your y dash will become the derivative outside of the original exponential. Okay, so with that in mind, let's see if we can tackle this question here. Find the equation of the tangent and the normal uh, of y equals three e two x at x equals to two. So first things first, we need to derive it. So let's do our y dash. Y dash here is going to become the two x will differentiate to two, comes out the front, so it'll be two times three. The three stays the same, it's a constant. And then so does your exponential, it stays the same, right? So in other words, it becomes 6e2x 
and there's your y dash. All right, so looking at this, my gradient of my tangent is when I substitute x equals to two. So it's just going to be six e to the two times two, which equals to six e to the four. That's going to be the gradient of my tangent. Okay, now what's going to be my gradient of my normal? So that means gradient of my normal is going to be the negative reciprocal, or it's going to be whatever I multiply this with to give me negative one. So in this case, it's going to be minus one on six uh, e to the four, e to the negative four. Yep. <clears throat> and that there, if I multiply those two together, uh, it'll give me negative one. Yep. So if I just wanted to quickly make sense of that, m1 times m2 equals negative one for perpendicular, which is how we find our normal. And so if I was to multiply these two together, six e to the four multiplied by negative one on six e to the negative four, what I get is uh, negative one e to the zero because of your index laws, the four minus four, and e to the zero is just one, and that's how I get there. Okay, so that's going to be your gradient of your tangent, gradient of your normal. Now let's continue on here. I've got my gradients, I just need a point. And so when, let's keep in mind here, when x equals to two, we need to find our y value. So it's just going to be three e to the four. So I'm just substituting that into my original. So we now have a point, we now have some gradients. So let's try tangent first. Tangent is going to be y minus y1. So y minus 3e4 uh, equals 2m. And I'm going to take the gradient of my tangent. So in this case is the 6e4, x minus x1, which is going to be 2. And from here, I'm happy for us to just go uh, 6e4 x take away 12e4 plus 3e4 and cleaning that up a little bit. I'm just left with 6e4x minus 12 plus three is minus nine e to the four. And I'm happy for that to be the equation of my tangent there, y equals. Okay, now for your normal, we do the, a very similar thing. The only difference now is we don't use uh, 6e to the 4, we don't use that one, we use our negative 1 on 6e to the negative 4. So again, y minus 3e to the 4, so y minus y1 equals to m. So this time I'm using my mn here, uh, e to the negative 4, x minus x1, and in this case it's 2. All right. And for here, because it's slightly more disgusting, I'm just going to times everything through by six. So I get 6y minus 18e4. And this becomes uh, negative e to the negative 4x. And it's going to become plus 2e to the negative 4. Okay, be careful with all your negatives. And from this case, this point here, I'm just going to push everything over to the left hand side. So I'm going to have e to the negative 4x because it's positive now. Uh, I still have plus 6y and I have minus 18e to the 4. Uh, yeah, minus 18e to the 4 and minus 2e to the negative 4. 2e to the negative 4 equals 0. And I would be happy to leave that. It's got my x, my y, and my constant together. That's it. So again, a little bit messy, a little bit kind of gross with all those E's, um, but the process is very, very similar to what you're familiar with, with tangents and normals. Hope that helps and I'll catch you guys later. Okay, bye-bye.